Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be taking a look at the Brilliant Home Control. Brilliant was nice enough to send me out a couple demo units to try for a few months so that I could take a closer look at all the features the Brilliant Home Control has to offer. For the longest time, I've wanted to be able to have some type of central hub in my house that allows for overall control of my smart home, similar to how I have a universal remote for my TV, sound system, and all the different gaming consoles and media entertainment systems. One option I have always considered was just mounting an old iPad to the wall and running some kind of dashboard software on it. While the old iPad on the wall option can work, I always shied away from it as I didn't want to have to run and manage yet another thing in my life that would need constant love and care. Not to mention that I would have to figure out a way to power the iPad, and with local electrical codes, I couldn't simply just have an outlet inside my wall. Brilliant offers the ability to have a central hub on your wall to control your smart home devices and turns whichever light or lights that are wired to it into smart switches. The light switch comes in four different sizes ranging from single gang up to four gang switches. All switch sizes except for the single gang have a slider for each load that the switch controls allowing for either tap on and off or sliding dim level control. All switches feature a very nice looking 5 inch 720p display that acts as your central hub and photo frame when not in use. Having the screen makes it great for when guests come over as they now have an easy way of navigating my smart home without having to have little instruction pamphlets everywhere explaining how to turn things on and off. You can set up scenes within the switch so that you or your guests can easily control multiple smart devices with a single push of a button. Some scene ideas would include turning off all the lights before leaving the house, dimming the lighting in your living room for a family movie night, or turning on lights and playing some great tunes for the party you're hosting later tonight. The screen is also great as it can be used to show if someone is at your door. When someone rings your doorbell, all installed brilliant smart switches will show you a live video from your doorbell. The doorbell notification is actually pretty quick and once the video is loaded seems to have very little delay. You can have a two-way conversation with whoever is at your door and if you have a supported smart lock you can even unlock the door right from brilliant. If you have more than one brilliant home control in your home, you can use the intercom function to talk with someone else in another room. This is a pretty cool feature and can help get someone's attention without having to shout through your home. They have even very recently released support for the ability to remotely view the camera on your Brilliant Home from the Brilliant app. Right now this feature is in beta for iOS and hopefully coming soon to Android. Don't worry though, you do have to enable remote view on each Brilliant Home control in order to be able to remotely view the camera. Brilliant has six different categories of supported smart home integrations and they are voice assistance, lighting and switching, climate control, security, music, and hubs. For voice assistance, the Brilliant Home Control has Amazon's voice assistant built right in. This allows for you to not only have Amazon's assistant in your home but also takes advantage of the screen so that you have a visual representation of what's going on as well as additional information such as if you ask it what the weather is. What's the weather? In Beijing, China, it's 64 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. You can expect more of the same today, with a high of 66 degrees and a low of 46 degrees. If you decide not to use the assistant, you won't find any annoying warnings or red status lights, which I appreciate. You will see an exclamation point and the icon grayed out. I'd love to see the ability to remove the icon from the screen and replace it with something else if you decide not to turn on the built-in Amazon assistant. The built-in Amazon Assistant does have some limitations, so while you can ask it to play music via your Sonos speakers, you won't be able to play music directly from the Switch. And unfortunately, you can't drop in from the Brilliant either. Lights connected to Brilliant can also be controlled by your Amazon Assistants as well. While there is no built-in Google Assistant, you can set up Google Assistant to control Brilliant lights as well as add Brilliant lights into Google routines. Adding Brilliant to Google Assistant is the same as any other integration. Open the Google Home app, go to Add a Device, and search for Brilliant and then log into your account. Once done, you can add lights controlled by Brilliant to different rooms and can control them via the Google Home app and Google Assistant just like any other light. HomeKit support is currently listed as coming soon. According to their webpage, support will be added via a software update and no new hardware will be required, which is good to see. Brilliant has a good number of smart lights and smart switches supported. Currently, the list of directly supported lights and switches include Philips Hue, Lifex, Wemo, Lutron, and Leviton. For these, you will go through the process of adding them to Brilliant directly. Once added, you can control the different lights and switches from the smart switch or app and include them in custom scenes you can build. Both Lifex and Wemo work without a hub being required. Hue, Lutron, and Leviton require a hub either from the manufacturer or the SmartThings hub to be able to integrate with any other platform. 
As far as climate control goes, Brilliant can interface with Ecobee, Honeywell Home, and Nest. Do take note that because of what Google is doing to the Works with Nest program, no new connections to Nest are possible at this time. Brilliant is working to get Nest thermostat support added for new customers. To add a smart thermostat, you follow the same steps as adding any other device. Once added, you'll be able to access climate control right from the home menu. I love being able to adjust the thermostat if I'm away from my phone, and honestly I'm finding myself using Brilliant to adjust the thermostat as it's actually quicker than pulling out my phone. If you do run in auto mode, you will have to switch to heat and cool mode individually in order to adjust them. Brilliant also has a good amount of integrations with different security products. Currently, the list includes August, Quickset, Schlag, Ring, and Yale. They also recently added Butterfly MX to the list is coming soon. I've never heard of Butterfly MX until seeing it on Brilliant's website, but it seems like a pretty cool product. It essentially is a smart intercom system for a multi-tenant building that can be used as access control. Right now, Brilliant supports integration with Sonos for music control. This allows for you to control music playback on Sonos speakers using Brilliant Control. You can also assign a slider to control the volume of a single Sonos speaker or a whole Sonos group. Finally, on the list of many integrations Brilliant supports is hubs. Currently, Brilliant only supports integration with the Samsung SmartThings Smart Hub. Including integration with the Smart Hub is a really smart move by Brilliant. This allows for them to easily expand their list of supported integrations without too much backend work. In addition, as long as the Smart Hub keeps adding more integrations, Brilliant will also gain those devices to be controlled. Integrating your SmartThings Hub with Brilliant opens up the ability for Brilliant to control all smart locks, smart light bulbs, and smart switches supported by Samsung SmartThings. To integrate with SmartThings, you will go through the same steps as you did to add everything else through the Brilliant switch. Currently, routines are not directly supported from SmartThings. If you want to take advantage of SmartThings routines through Brilliant, you will have to create a virtual switch in SmartThings and authorize Brilliant access to that. Once allowed, you can use the virtual switch to trigger routines. If you'd like to control Brilliant from SmartThings, you can do that too. The only caveat is that you have to do it through the new SmartThings app instead of the classic app. This is something Samsung is forcing for all new devices being added to the list of working with SmartThings. You can use both the classic app and the new app at the same time, but there are a few gotchas, so make sure to do your research before activating the new app. If you do add Brilliant in, you'll be able to interact with the lights connected to the smart switch via SmartThings, which will allow for routines and automations to be set up with them. To add Brilliant into SmartThings, you'll need to open up the new app and click on the plus sign on the top right hand side of the screen. In the drop down menu, click on add device and on the new window that opens up, we will search for Brilliant. Next you'll click on Switch Dimmer and log into your Brilliant account from there. After that you'll get a confirmation of your account being connected and all the switches that are to be added. Once added, you'll be able to interact with the lights from the app, assign them to a room, add them to a routine, rename them, or use them in an automation. Turning the light on or off at the physical switch will also trigger it to be updated within SmartThings, which is great, so no need to worry about out of sync switches. It's also nice that not everyone in the house has to have a bunch of different apps on their phone anymore. Instead, they can use the Brilliant app on their phone to control all the smart home gadgets, or if they want to ditch all the smart home apps altogether, they can easily control everything right from one of the Brilliant home controls. I think it'd be pretty cool if Brilliant could figure out a way to allow for a guest to be authorized to access through the app for a limited time frame. This could be a big game changer if I have anyone over to house it for an extended period of time. Installation of Brilliant is similar to other smart switches. You will need to have a live neutral line in your wall as well as ground. If you do not have either, you will not be able to install the Brilliant smart switch. And while installation isn't that difficult, if you are not comfortable with working with electricity, please do not attempt the installation yourself. You can be seriously injured or worse if you get electrocuted. To get started, you'll need to turn off power to your switch by flipping the breaker or removing the fuse the switch is on. It's also a really good idea to test the switch out to make sure it's really off. Next, remove your old light switch from the wall. You won't need to label which wires are load and which are aligned because Brilliant has the ability to auto-sense which is which. It is a good idea to take a picture of your old wiring just in case you have to put your old switch back in for some reason. For this installation, all of my lights are controlled by a single switch. Brilliant does support three-way and four-way configurations. If you'd like more information about which configurations are supported, check out their support page for more information. Once you're ready to install the base of Brilliant, you'll want to make sure all the wire nuts are opened all the way. You can do this by screwing the terminals to loosen them. As you loosen the terminals, the nut will lower down, allowing for the wire to be inserted. Once all the terminals are ready, 
plate, you can go ahead and insert the wires. You can either use the wires in your wall or you can use the included extension wires and wire nuts. I did a combination of both just to show that either option is possible. If you do end up using the wire nuts, you may want to consider wrapping electrical tape around them and the wires to help keep everything together. I will say I did have a little less trouble just using the included wire extensions, but if you are like me in an older house, your electrical box may not be as deep and therefore have limited space. I recommend putting a single wire in at a time and screwing it down so that way you don't have to fumble around with multiple wires. If you are installing Brilliant in a box that has more gangs than switches, for example like my ugly 3 gang setup with only 2 switches, all line terminals must be powered. This is fine to do with a switch and you do not need to have all switches with load. I haven't decided yet what I will use the unused slider for, but luckily I can program Brilliant to control any other smart switch or smart light I have. After your ground, neutral, load, and line wires are attached, it's time to place them into the wall. Take note that there is a particular way of installing the switch base, so make sure the up arrow is pointing up. You'll also want to make sure to be careful when putting the switch in your wall, and make sure to not put too much tension on your wires. Once in the box, you can go ahead and start screwing it in. Take note that the plate has strain reliefs that are designed to bend to accommodate differences in gang box styles and mounting types. Some bending of the strain reliefs is normal, and not required for a secure fit. Over tightening may result in faceplate mounting issues, so do be careful. Now that the base is installed, power can be restored. Do this by flipping the breaker we turned off originally. Once power is restored, the lights should turn on. You can test out the lights by pressing the buttons of the base. After all the lights are tested to be working, we can put the faceplate on. If a light does not work, you will need to turn off power and check all of your wiring. To install the faceplate, make sure it is in the correct orientation with the camera and sensors on the top and line up the brackets of the base with the holes on the faceplate. Press the faceplate onto the base brackets and with both hands securely holding both sides, slide the faceplate down onto the hooks. You should hear it click into place. Once booted, Brilliant will try to locate any other nearby Brilliant devices. You will see a list of available wireless networks. Click on yours to add it. Do note, like most IoT devices, Brilliant only supports 2.4 GHz wireless networks. Also, depending on the version of firmware you have, you may run into some trouble if your SSID or password has special characters in it. If you do have trouble, use a hotspot if available to connect Brilliant to the internet to pull the latest update. Once updated, you'll be able to connect to your home network. I had this issue on one of the two Brilliant devices, so not sure what version of software has it fixed. But just be aware of that if you run into setup issues. I've had this happen on a few other different IoT devices, so I'm not really that surprised. Once connected to your wireless network, Brilliant will pull any available update. The update can take several minutes depending on the speed of your internet connection. Luckily, you can still use the lights connected to your Brilliant during the update. Now that we're on the most recent version of software, we can set up our Brilliant. First, we will give it a name. Afterwards, you'll either create your home location, or if you have one created, you can add your switch to it. If you add your Brilliant to an existing home location, you will need to enter a passcode that will be on one of the other Brilliants. Once entered, it will add itself to your account and pull down any relevant settings. Next will be to assign Brilliant to a room. If you don't see one you like, you can create your own. After that, we will be able to configure the individual lights connected to Brilliant. You will assign each connected light to a room, give it a name, and set up one-way or three-way capability. Once the lights are set up, gesture setup is next. Gestures include sliding a finger on the sliders up and down, to turn lights on or off, if not on a dimmer, or to dim them if they are. Gestures also include the ability to use two fingers to flick the screen up to turn on all the lights assigned to the room on, and flick the screen down to turn them all off. After the physical connections are set up, Brilliant will walk you through the options of setting up integrations. The first one being Amazon Smart Assistant. You can either sign into your Amazon account here or skip it. If you do skip, you can always set it up later. Next is Live View Access. If you do enable this, there is a built-in physical privacy shutter that you can close to block the camera. Next is Adding Devices. Here is where you can go through and set up your different integrations. Click on any of the ones you want to add and go through the process of connecting to everything. Once done setting your integrations up, you can click on the X on the top left hand corner. And with that, initial setup is complete. Brilliant has a built-in motion sensor that can be used to turn on and off both the screen as well as a specific light which is great. You can even adjust the motion sensitivity right on Brilliant and get a readout of what the sensor is currently seeing for motion. I've never had this type of control over a motion sensor before. You can pin your favorite scene. This will then have it on the main menu allowing for easy access to it. I did have to reach out to support on two different occasions, and as I do with any product I am making a video on, I make sure to use an email address not associated with my channel, but I like to make sure I get a real experience. 
With that said, both times I reached out to support, they were very responsive and helpful. Both times I got a response within a few hours of sending an email, which was great. Overall, Brilliant is a great smart switch that offers so much more than just controlling your light from your phone. And while the cost is a little high, starting at $300 for a single switch and going up $50 for each additional switch, you really do get a lot for what you pay for. Right now, Brilliant supports 19 different integrations, and they have continued to add more integrations, which is really promising to see. And in addition to continually adding new integrations, they seem to also be releasing a steady stream of new features and fixes, which is really refreshing to see in the smart home space. If you can justify the price point, I think Brilliant is a great option to check out, especially if you're looking for some type of central control hub for your smart home. Let me know what you think of Brilliant in the comments below, and if you think you plan on picking one up, if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so you can stay up to date on any new videos I release. Thank you for watching.